Good evening and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. My name is Lynn Marquadant. I'm your host and today's date is May 6th, 2016. So welcome. Fibercast is all about all of us getting together and sewing for an hour. I hope you've had a good week. I'm here back from Baltimore and I am going to be working in a new room which I'll tell you all about on my various projects including one of my UFOs. Remember at the beginning of the year we started All People Quilt, their monthly UFO challenge. I am going to be making some nutcracker ornaments. They're all ready to turn and stuff and bedazzle with some beads. So that's what I thought I would do. If I have time, I'll go back to these dolls and they still need lots of work. So that's my plan. Grab a project and come see what we can accomplish together in 60 minutes. So you'll see that I'm in a different spot. I hope you can see me okay and I've even started early so that we can test out this situation. And because I was ready to go, I am downstairs in the Simply Colorful studio. The upstairs you would not recognize. The carpeting has been all torn out. Bob did it. It's a 10 year old carpet. It still had construction dust and every thing you could imagine in it. It was an indoor outdoor carpet and um, we put it in like I say 10 years ago in April to get the permit to live here and it served us well for 10 years but it's so glad to see it up. So that means everything in my studio is out of that room and that room is over our garage. It's a two-car garage and Bob did all of that while I was down in Baltimore and he set me up here in what is our dining room. So I'm sorry for the reflection of the lights behind me. That's our window. And he was so good. He put my office desk behind me and all of my doll making things. I said to him, I just couldn't have them packed away. So I am glad to be with you. Now look at that. I was able to just turn this nutcracker. And he's little. He's only like five and a half inches tall. And he's, he's based after a Tilda doll. You may remember I was making them last Christmas and I made the ballerina and this is the nutcracker to go with it. And I hope I have his arms. It's occurring to me that I didn't, I might not have made his arms. But we'll turn a few more and stuff this. Doesn't mean we can't get going on this. I didn't say how many I would finish for my UFO. But I have to get moving on my UFOs. I've seen some of you, like Dawn has finished another UFO. That was great to see. The, the months sure do creep up on us. I cannot believe this is our first Fibercast in May of 2016. Can you believe it? Happy May Day to everyone. I heard that they were having lots of protests out in Seattle and that they do it every year because it is a day to recognize workers and to rally together. And I always think of it as the maypole. We've talked about it before. And the flowers, dropping flowers off at each other's house. So there's two done. And I know it's hard to see from way back here. Hmm. All the others, I'm... These two I opened at the side. When I sewed, I left the opening at the side so it was relatively easy to flip. This one and the rest of them, I only left one opening down here at the base. So we'll see if this can work. Like always with Fibercast, I love to see your emails of what you're working on. And the address to send them to is lmarquedant at gmail.com. And I'll spell it. It's L for my first initial, Lynn. Last name Marquedant, which is spelled M-A-R-Q-U-E-D-A-N-T, and that's at gmail.com. Or you can post your comments and your thoughts on the Google Hangout page or the Simply Colorful Facebook page. We'd love to see what you're working on. We also have a mystery quilt along page 
for those of you who have been around for a while, you know that every once in a while we do mystery quilts, and we're probably coming up on it being time to do another, but we'll see. I'm going to pull out my turning pipes here. Oh, which reminds me of Sarah. Hi, Sarah, if you're out there. Sarah made me laugh. She's a, she taught me how to use these turning tubes. And when she was at the doll makers, our doll makers weekend last weekend, which I'll tell you about, she had a handful of these, like maybe 10 of them. And it made me laugh that you can never have enough of these turning tools. And I'm not even really using it right right now. I'm using it more like a poker. There we go, but it's working. You've seen me do this before. Oh, it's just so nice to be able to play with the fabric for a few minutes. What a week. You know, last week I went to Sacramento and that was successful and then came home and actually, why don't I tell you about that? Had a what we call the doll makers weekend. And there were five of us. It was perfect. Although we missed some people, so we could have had a few more and done just fine, but it was lovely. And, and the house was clean, which I loved. And everyone arrived right after, let's see, early afternoon, at noon, around lunchtime on Friday. Everyone came bearing so much food and materials, all packed up beautifully. And we actually, in this dining room area, is where we set up shop. And we basically spent two and a half days, actually it turned out being two days, but it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, just creating, and then eating, and then binge watching some TV shows. I got turned on to Outlander and to Orphan Black. Highly recommend them both. I'm, new, I'm a newbie to both of them. And it was just so much fun. But like I said, we had so much good food, including um, Sue brought hummus with pita bread, and the pita bread was so fresh, and a, um, a vegetable hors d'oeuvres, you know, cut up vegetables. That was perfect. We had oodles of fruit, Pat, um, we had two Pats here. Pat A brought fresh baked Italian cookies from uh, maybe the North End, somewhere in Boston. She lives in Boston. Those were delicious, including the ones that have powdered sugar on them. They're like butter, and made with butter and flour, and butter and flour and sugar, and more butter and flour and sugar. I love those. And then we had the other Pat who made this most amazing southern, ooh, Dane was there, this most amazing southern cake that was made out of coconut pecans, cream cheese frosting. It was so delicious. In fact, she left a piece, and my husband, Bob, who does not like sweets or eat sweets, immediately ate it on Sunday, so I should tell the other Pat. He ate it right away, because we were joking that he wasn't a sweets eater, and I would take two pieces pretending one was for Bob, but then, of course, I'd end up eating it. Anyway, who's out there? I just heard a ding. Hey, hi, Chris Myers. Welcome back. Happy Mother's Day. I'm glad you're there. I hope you're well. She says she's watching live. That's cool. Hi to Abby if she's there. Although knowing Abby, she's probably out or she's with friends. The pictures of you guys in, I don't even know, I say this every time, is it Guadalupe? On the sailboat are just amazing. It looked beautiful. It's going to finally be nice. It's been a lousy weather week here. I'm so glad you're out there. So I'm just going to keep rocking this. It's, it's working, and I'm having fun turning this. Turning these parts, some days it's good, and some days it doesn't work. So tonight it's working. Uh, 
Chris says, what are you doing for Mother's Day? Well, I am going down to the vineyard with Bob tomorrow, and we're going to take a walk with Mom and cook her dinner. So be with Mom. Probably and do whatever else she wants to do. I think we're going to stop. Mom, if you're on, <laughs> I was just about to say what we're going to get you for a present. So I will hold that thought. <laughs> but it's going to be fun. I can't wait. Oh, and we're going to take a walk with Nicole and my Aunt Nancy and folks on Sunday morning at Polly Hill. You heard me talk about Polly Hill? It's, they have... It's kind of around the corner from my mom. We could walk, but that would be too much walking. It's probably a mile. And Polly Hill was a horticulturist that I think I've talked about before. She, she grew all sorts of flowers, and now it's continued as a, I don't know if you technically call it a nature conservancy, but they literally have greenhouses. That's where my mom goes once a week to help propagate things. So it's a pretty cool place. Anyway, that's what we're doing. I hope you're doing something really fun. Knowing Abby, she'll, she'll surprise you. Maybe not sand in a locket like she's done in the past. I thought that was the best gift. Chris's daughter, Abby, one year, got her sand from in this little capsule from the Cape, because Chris loves the Cape, and um, that was a great gift. Speaking of sand and beaches, KB, if you're out there, KB is my sister in Pennsylvania. She just came back from a, also, she was away on a Caribbean trip the same week Chris and Abby were, and she got so much sea glass. So KB, if you're there, that was beautiful. That was like, that seems like something when we were kids we would find that much sea glass. I don't think I've ever... I mean, it was a whole big, she posted a picture of it. It's like a whole big um, cookie tray full of sea glass and little shells. It looked nice. What I wouldn't give for some sea glassing like that. Now you're lucky if we just find a piece or two. But the good news, that what that means, of course, is that we're littering less, maybe less glass. Have you heard there are a whole areas of plastic out in the ocean that get caught in swirls out in the ocean. Like acres and acres of plastic, I've heard. I don't know how we get rid of that. And speaking of our natural resources and keeping them clean, or I don't know why I'm, I'm jumping around here. How about the fires up in Fort, is it, let's mix something. We're thinking of you all. I hope everyone is doing okay. In fact, let me pull that up and see if what the weather report is saying. Fires in Canada. Wow. Okay. Canadian wildflower fires in Fort McMurray. Fort McMurray. Ooh, the BBC is, is saying two hours ago, Canadian wildflowers halted the evacuation convoy. Ooh, fire in Canada. Let's see what this says. May lead us to nothing. But this was May 6th, two hours ago. And it says the only evacuation convoy leaving the Canadian city of Fort Mick Murray has been suspended due to 200 feet flames flanking the road. <gasps> the police escorted convoy of 1,500 vehicles was due to pass by the southern part of the city en route to Edmonton and Calgary. Parts of the city in the province of Alberta have been left devastated after a wildfire struck earlier this week. Officials had said it would take four days or more for all the evacuees. Quote, we've stopped due to heavy smoke, said Sergeant Jack Poitras of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. 
you get flames of 100 and 200 feet up in the air on both sides of the road, so it's just not safe. The BBC's James Cook, who is in Alberta, says the oil, the officials now fear that an oil facility near the flames could explode. Wow. And in a statement released Friday afternoon, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau called upon Canadians to donate to charities assisting relief efforts. That sounds like a good idea. Wow. And he continues to say, though Alberta's loss is profound, we will get through this tragedy together as friends and as neighbors. Okay, this is good. Weather forecasters predict a 40% chance of rain this coming Sunday, which may help slow the fire. More than 1,000 firefighters are there, 150 helicopters, almost 300 pieces of heavy equipment, and 27 aircraft tankers have been deployed. That's good. Wow. Wow, and here's an overhead. We've not seen rain in Syria for the last two months. Oh my, lots of dings. Who's going, what's going on out there? This must be Chris. Chris, are you saying hello to me? Chris? Did I, did I mention that Chris is out there? Hi. Oh, speaking of Chris, she also reports, it's my ninth anniversary anniversary at Allaire today. Nine years, are you kidding? Congratulations. I remember when you left EMC to go to this little startup in Waltham. And it wasn't called the Lair then. Congratulations. That's that's a huge accomplishment in this environment, this work environment. Wow. Now what's this? I'm seeing some other dings here. Chris, what did she say? Let's see. <laughs> this is classic. This is what I was talking about last week. Oh, if Linda McNiff is out there, this is what you were talking about, right? I read my phone, I laughed, I respond, but I don't tell you what it is. So this is a very funny joke that I can't tell you in person. Hmm. I can't even make it up. Oh my goodness. Well, you're just going to have to trust me that it was funny, and if I get guts up enough, I will post it on the Simply Colorful Facebook page later. It's just a play on words. Okay, let's see. Who else is out there? Ding, 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 ding. Ooh. Who's that? Can you please say my name eight times? Oh, that's so funny. Christine and I are having a shout-out contest, and I'm a poor loser. This is from, ooh, what's your name again? Jean. Hi, Jean. I'm so glad you're with us, Jean. As everyone knows, Jean joins us from across town in Hopkinton. And she, Jean, is the proprietor and owner of Cider Mill Quilts. Jean makes t-shirt quilts. Jean is my friend. Dick runs up the hall, up the hill, and Jack tumbles down. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't know, I was just thinking, Gene, 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 the jumping machine. I don't know how many that was, but hopefully it was more than eight. Okay, so that's very funny. You guys, I'm so glad you're out there. You made me laugh. <sighs> so, the fires are burning, and they should get some. Who's this? Ah! <laughs> and Chris says... Gene is a cheater. That's funny. That's true. I never knew you were doing the shout out contest. That's too funny. Well, Chris Myers of Dockside Quilting. Oh, I shouldn't have said her last name. <laughs> oh, it's making me laugh. Miss you guys. To the moon and back, I miss you. And we will get together soon, I hope. And the Marathon Quilters. Um, quilting retreat sounded great. It sounded lovely. I think that was, was that one week ago? Two, I think that was two weeks ago. Because last week, thank you for welcoming my doll friends and sharing with you what everyone was working on. You can see that they're working on very eclectic things. In fact, 
I should show you all what I did all weekend. You're going to laugh at how little I got done. But let me see. It's right here. I was playing with paper clay. I don't know if you know. It doesn't show up. This is the only thing I worked on all week. And it's literally five, five dolls, five heads, five necks, five feet, five arms. You get the picture. And I use these cool little molds. I know you can't see that, but there's a drying machine, a convection oven, and then silicone molds. And you push the clay in, the paper clay in, put it in the convection of it and you get all of these really fun things hearts flowers and those are going to be able to adorn my paper clay it's like playing with plaster of Paris when it's done but it's not plaster of Paris it's paper clay and it's it gets solidified like porcelain so I'm really excited to work on that if if I had been in the mood to get derby I'd be sanding this right now but I thought I'd hold off on that I had so much else to do. So, oh, ding, ding, ding. I wonder if this is Chris or Jean. <laughs> and now, now, apparently, there are some back channel conversations going on. That's what I love about Fibercast. Norma and Marquet, are you connecting on the back channel? Norma and Marquet, for those of you who don't, might not know, are cousins, very close cousins. And they've introduced us to each other and to themselves over the last couple of years. And we love having them join us. So, and, and these conversations are wonderful. Now, now, apparently, they're having drinking games. So I guess I better start saying KB. KB, KB, KB. Or are you counting Karens and not KBs? We should do a contest of some sort with names. <laughs> Speaking of Karens and KKs and KBs, I want to say hi to Kathy Kettleson out in the Midwest and to KK, Karen Cluin out in San Diego. Hi. Oh, as soon as I finish this, we'll start stuffing it. Here we go. See how wet my fingers? Sometimes that helps. And I'm sure if now, oh, here we go. Okay. Oh, so now I can show you I've been crocheting. And since my sister received her shawl, I can show you the shawl I crocheted. KB, you don't know how hard it was to keep my mouth shut about that. I was telling mom I wasn't getting credit for the work I was doing. And it, when I first started the shawl, so I'll show it right now, it was meant to be all that coral um, coral orange that you like so well and crocheting I have learned and I am learning continue to learn just uses so much more yarn than other things I've made so of course I ran out and I only bought I didn't buy enough to begin with it's a long story I bought two kinds when I went down with Chris and Jean to the shop down in Barrington Rhode Island so, oh, Jean, can you hear the band? They might take requests. I can click down to them. That's right. I bet you can hear the band finally. All right. All photos. Let's see if this is working in the cloud. I can show you a bigger picture, I'm hoping. Oh, this is kind of fun. Have any of you been to the Sacramento airport? At baggage claim, it's the coolest thing. They have suitcases around the poles. Isn't that neat? Two big poles, and it looks like just a dolly full of suitcases to the 
the top of the airport. Let's see. Oh, this was the biggest sushi roll I've ever had. And it was delicious. <laughs> All right, let's not do that. Let's show you. Okay, here it is. Yay. Can you see that? So it's a shawl, and it starts light, and it goes darker. And I think it's it wraps around her. It goes several feet wide, much wider. It started out maybe four feet, three or four feet, and then by the time it's done and the edging sprawls out, it's got to be six feet. Anyway, that's what I've been working on, and I haven't been able to show everyone, so now that's fun to show you. Let's see. So let me see who's out there since I have my big old iPad up and running. Hey! hey. Oh, thank you, DDR Quilter, for forwarding the tweet tonight. I appreciate that. Okay, and welcome to our new followers. Ooh, Plumalytics and Performance G2 and Alan Brickman. Welcome. Luke Floyd. Okay, so Carol. Hi, Carol. Oh, Carol writes, she says, hope you and the Fibercasters have had a good week. It's nice to catch you live, she says. It must be late there. Last week it was Saturday before I got a chance to see the cast. Looked like you were having a great time. We were. And you can tell we were all over the place. And I was so pleased that all of the doll makers wanted to come in front of the camera. Because that's not, that's fairly new for them. And um, thank you for, I thought about that later, that as a doll maker you get used to seeing these these bodies that actually are naked. But you don't even think of them as naked bodies. They're just dolls. It's weird. It's weird, I know. But I noticed that one of us had the doll. Sarah was holding up her naked doll body. And the rest of us think of it as sculpture. And it, I hope it wasn't uncomfortable for anyone. Anyway, that made me chuckle. So we were having a good time, Carol. But back to Carol. She says, I'm still working on half-square triangles, although they are bigger now, and I'm working on hourglass blocks. She says, I'm making 13-inch hourglass blocks and found that doing them with large squares and sewing like half-square triangle twice, I end up with blocks that had wavy edges. So I'm making smaller half-square triangles and putting them together like I would when making pinwheels, and I found that they look a lot better that way. Half-square triangles are tough, right, because you're cutting it on the bias and it gets wonky. If it, It's so easy to, to stretch, right? If you want to remind yourself how hard half square triangles are, just take a piece of fabric, woven fabric, and pull it all which way. So see how that, and here's, that's not really stretching. This way stretches much more. And there's the weft and the waif. This is the grain. So the grain's going this way, it doesn't stretch. Cross grain, it stretches, and then you want to see something crazy when you, I mean, ugh, perpendicular stretches some, but when you go cross grain, look at this. See how much that stretches. So you're, that is tough, and I've already, see, I stretched that right out of shape. Unless you're really careful with half square triangles, it can get wonky because you're, you're actually sewing stretched fabric. Anyway, you knew that, Carol. Oh, and she says, have you ever had problems making big blocks like that? Yes, and it's because of that stretch. And I would just, um, what kind of tips do I have? Oh, I love what you're doing, though. I have to show everyone this. Ooh, though, that's, the tri that's the one you showed us last week. And then I love how you're putting these big ones in. I would say you figured part of it out, didn't you? Let me see this. Uh, how 
Have you ever done? There's so many ways to make half square triangles, and every and you'll find that over time you will find your best approach. No one approach is the same. Uh, for me, I actually the AccuQuilt Go cutter, where you literally it it has the shape, the die of the half square triangle. I literally will take my two pieces of fabric that I want to sew together and I'll put them through the die and it will cut out exact mirror images. I don't even undo them. You just put it through, cut it, bring it over to your sewing machine and sew the long seam. That's probably the most precise I've been able to do. But of course, oftentimes that's not possible. So another way that I have liked when I is to, and it doesn't matter if it's, I usually will trim it down, is take two squares of the two pieces of fabric you want to put together, put them facing each other, right sides together, get them as flat as you can, again trying not to stretch them, and then sew all the way around the edge, and then cut a diagonal through it, and then iron open the four pieces, and then square it up squaring it up on half square triangles and I'm not a big square upper as you know but sometimes on half square triangles I'll have to do that um, there's also paper piecing if you get really frustrated on big half square triangles the other thought is depending on how you're going to fit it all together you may find tricky ways so that you don't need half square triangles like let's say you end up you may be able to do squares instead, so play with that. Anyway, it looks great, and I'm so glad you called in from England. And you call yourself England, not the UK, right? So I, I want to be correct there. But Carol, I'm so glad you're with us, and so glad you're live. Colleen! Hi, she says, I am ready for a change I'm not eating my dinner during Fibercast. That's great. Nice to hear from you, Colleen. Oh, and I can't wait for the weather report. Colleen is in California, and she always tells us what it's doing there. She says, oh, I've been sick with a stuffy nose, basically allergy cold symptoms, and just too tired to do much. I'm taking drugs now. Ditto, girl, friend. The allergies are terrible. But last week I sewed up a storm and made three bags and a panel mermaid doll and accessories and a quilt. That's great, says Colleen in Rainyish, California. Well, hello, I'm so glad you're with us. Let's see. Ooh, Patty Bannister. Patty, I'm so glad you've been calling in. She says, I'll be catching you later, but I had to share news. I finished my bow tie quilt. Yay, pretend this is Google clapping. Congratulations. It turned out great and was worth all the extra quilting. Can't wait to catch up later tonight. I bet it was. Congratulations. That's great. Oh, we have lots of followers. Oh. Let's see. Hmm. I think I've got everyone. Let me see. I just want to make sure. Can you hear the band? I'd love to know if you can hear the band, although they're pretty quiet right now, aren't they? Okay. Let's keep motoring because we have things to get done, time's ticking, and I want to finish these UFOs. And I want to get to the fun part, which is the adorning them with beads. But I need to find their arms. Hmm. What do we have here? Oh, it doesn't look like I sewed any arms. See, this is how you start out. Just for kicks, just so you know. In order to make my little nutcracker ornaments, see all the different rows of the fabric? I sewed together all the pieces, and then I put them facing each other. So two of exactly the same, and I nested them, and then I put my template, which is on waxed paper, freezer paper, 
and I put it down, iron it on, and then sew right around it, and then peel it off, and then cut around it. So I have plenty more, and I'll have to go, have to go make some arms for these guys because I don't know if you remember, they all had arms that come down, and then I was putting some fun beaded parts there. But we still can make some progress on this. We won't finish it tonight. But we'll make progress, and then I want to go back to this one and do some more beading on that one. So I'm getting my stuffing forks out. Remember these stuffing forks? <coughs> yes, Colleen, the, the allergies around here are dreadful. At least I think that's what it is. So I kind of twist it on my stuffing fork. The stuffing fork has like a little prong, like a the end of a snake's tongue. I don't know if all snakes have that, but some of them do. And so it catches the fiber and it pushes them in. And I have two sizes. This is a smaller one. This is a bigger one. Same thought that the tongs pick up the fabric, or the, yeah, the stuffing. There we go. And these ornaments, if I remember right from this Christmas, really work well if I stuff them tight. And they're small enough so you can do that. You know, they won't look overstuffed or like fat little <laughs> nutcrackers, which would be kind of funny too. Oh. So what else? So, oh, so back to Doll Weekend, and then I'll tell you about Baltimore, which really there isn't too much to tell about that. Doll Weekend, not only do we have that southern pecan coconut cream cheese cake that was absolutely delicious, we also had, I, I made a chicken salad on Friday night, so I put a big bed of the greens and then I took, I cut, jeez, I cooked chicken breast, and then I sliced it up and put it on top, and then I put some cheese, and <clears throat> I meant to have raisins, I forgot the raisins. Anyway, very good, fresh bread. And then on Saturday night, Pat had made a lasagna, which was delicious, a vegetable lasagna, but then she put, she had meatballs and sausages on the side. <clears throat> And let's see, on Sunday we had pancakes, as if that wasn't enough, right? <coughs> so it was really fun. If anyone ever is up for that, let me know. I loved having a little sleep over here. And then Bob was so cute, my husband Bob. Well, first off, he helped me get the place clean, right, which is not an easy chore, and he finished the tiling of the bathroom upstairs because he knew that our visitors would want to take a shower and they didn't have to see a partially tiled bathroom. So 10 years later, our tile is all done in that bathroom. It looks great. So then he left and he had to, I thought for sure, Mom, he'd go to the vineyard and he'd be with you. But he had work to do. He had showings. He sells real estate, and it gets busy in the spring. So he had showings, and he had a christening, and then on Saturday night, he had our friend's 25th wedding anniversary party. So he wasn't going anywhere. So he basically, here I sent my husband out with a ba his travel bag, and he stayed at a friend's house on Friday night. Then on Saturday night, he stayed here, which was really good. And uh, I was glad he came back because I would have felt terrible. So it was all good. Oh, so the, the TV shows we discovered. <clears throat> Outlander with period costumes, and I really don't know much about that yet. I think it's on its fourth season. I have to go back and check it. But it's a period thing that happens over in Ireland. And I think it's a love story, and beyond that, I don't. And it's there are some gruesome parts, and I don't know much more than that. Orphan Black. Oh, and it's I think it's on Stars. 
Orphan Black is on the BBC, and it's also several seasons in, so I have a lot to catch up on. And it's about this girl, woman, young woman, who is cloned. And so there are, and it's done by one actress, and she plays all of these different parts. It's really good. And what's happened is now this experiment created all these clones that are now in their 20s, and now the, ex the original experimenters are trying to kill them all off because of whatever, whether it was for fear of being... I don't know quite why they're trying to kill them all off. That's the bottom line. Fascinating to discover who they are, and then, again, this actress plays all of these different cloned women. <clears throat> so... That is a second choice, if anyone. I'd love to hear what you're working, what you're watching. And I've still, I've not gotten to House of Cards. I can't find it for free anywhere. <coughs> so I'll just keep waiting. Of course, we watched Downton Abbey. Oh, and then I watched the TV show, I mean, the movie with um, Bill Hader and... Amy Schumer train wreck and it's kind of long Amy Schumer wrote it and it's a chick flick and I really liked it Bob did not like it at all and I and I got it free on on demand I don't know if I would pay to go see it but that but I enjoyed it because <laughs> they fall in love and I won't spoil it anymore so See how I put, I'm putting a lot of stuffing in here, and I kind of goofed because this, I didn't stuff the neck, <coughs> excuse me, strong enough, and I got the body too strong now to be able to push it up, but let me try. I'm going to squeeze up on the side, see if I can do that. Knowing my luck, I'll blow it out, and then that won't be good. Doll makers who make the doll fingers. And I'm sure there are many of you out there that are much more proficient in doll making than I. I am a new doll maker. So I apologize if you tuned in and you were looking for something more sophisticated. I am at the beginning stages, but I can see the promise. It's really, in fact, if I do if I keep doing this, I'm gonna start calling it figurative sculpture. Doesn't that sound better than dolls? <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so anyway, this is almost done. <coughs> Can you hear the band downstairs? They've taken a break and now they're chattering. All right. Getting there. Oh, that's right. On, at Christmas time, I also sewed down the middle here to make two legs. But I think I, I don't have to do that on this one. So there's one. This will be a UFO. So just think. This is one of 12 UFOs from the year. Yikes! Gonna get my get working on this stuff. Heidi, Carol, and Deb. Oh, that's right. So Monday night, we. This is my sis, sister-in-law Carol and my cousin-in-law or cousin, whatever. We decided to go to the fabric place over in Framingham. And we had it planned for several weeks because, of course, I was traveling and I had doll thing and they had things. And um, We picked Monday, May 2nd. It was going to be great. We had it all planned. Deb came here. We switched cars. Then I drove us over, picked Carol up, and then we went to the fabric place. Well, we got there at quarter to seven. <coughs> Thinking that we had the Modern Quilt Guild, the um, the whole exhibit, and we were going to buy fabric for $1.99. Well, of course, when I picked the date May 2nd, because um, Deb sent me the 
the brochure, and she said, when do you want to go? And I wrote right back the only date that I could go, which was May 2nd, because of all the travel, etc. But I neglected to look at when the Modern Quilt Guild's meeting was going to end and when the sale was over. And basically, we missed it all by a day. And remember, we got there at quarter to 7 on a Monday night? Fabric place closed at 7. <laughs> so we had 15 minutes there. None of us bought it. We didn't buy a thing. So the good news is we, the, the best part of this whole trip was we really had a great time. But we were saying afterwards we didn't spend a penny and we didn't eat an extra calorie. So it was good, all good. Anyway, we checked out Sophisticated. They were open until 8. So we booked across town and we went to Sophisticated which if you're anywhere down around here has some good quality fabric for really good prices. And their ends, nothing new really, but um, especially they have lots of costume type clothing for like ballet um, outfits, or they have full line of silks. They have lots of dis uh, drapery fabric. It's a good place. For cottons and for quilting, I'd say it's a good source for backing quilting. And I have found good fabric there for the front of quilts because I'm it just fit in my budget better. Um, and it's it's pretty most of it's pretty good quality. So I highly recommend that. And and you know what? It was good. It was a Monday night, and believe me. Both Deb and Carol, I applaud them. They get up very early to go. They're both uh, superintendent or, or principal um, chief of staffs or administrators. So they have big jobs in Belmont and in, I think, Upton, I think. I hope that's not wrong, Deb. Deb gets up at 4.30, and she goes and works out ahead of time. So they have been up since 4.30. I think Carol gets up at 5.00. For her travel so it was really good that they made the effort that came out at night it was dark and they had to get up early the next day and we all had a good time so maybe that's something we could all keep trying to do is think of a, a friend maybe you haven't connected with in a while or or something that you haven't done that you have been thinking about going to a, a museum or or just taking a ride just for the sake of it, just for the heck of it. Go try and find some um, hawks or take a ride to the countryside and just look at what's growing. I know I'm going to try and do a little bit more of that. Because otherwise it just you go day to day to day to day, right? Doing our... Same old things. Which brings me to work. <sighs> it was a very successful week work-wise. Um, I work for a company called EMC, I think I've mentioned to you. And EMC is being acquired by Denali Holding. And we're becoming part of Dell Technologies. It hasn't... The ink hasn't dried finally, but most of the uh, government approvals are done. They still have the shareholder vote, and then it's pretty much a done deal, and they're thinking it's on track for the summer. So, as you might imagine, there's a lot of planning going on for what, how we'll operate and what we'll look like after the merger. And it's not a merger, it's an acquisition. So... Um, what was I going to say? Oh, so we EMC the company I work for had its annual user group conference, which they call EMC World, out in Las Vegas this week, and it was bigger than better than ever. They had Duran Duran sing on Saturday night. They always have great bands. I saw Bruno Mars there. I saw Adam Levine and Maroon Five. It was all Maroon Five. Ooh. Oh, Jean, 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 Jean! You're the master, she says. Jean says the House of Cards is free on Netflix. Don't I have to pay for Netflix? All right, 
Oh, and Chris says she can hear the band. That's awesome. You know what? I'm going to be quiet so you can hear this song. I should know this the name of the song. Who's out there? Let's give it a few more minutes. I just texted Bob and I told him we could hear them. And I told him to turn it up and play a chick song. Let's see what he plays. He may not be near his phone. In fact, I just heard a ding in the other room. His phone's in the other room, so he's not going to see it. Oh, well. Anyway, thank you for letting me know. Thank you, Chris. That was called Stray Cat Strut. I knew you would know that. Can I just tell everyone that the key to a happy life is surround yourself with smart people <laughs> and kind people. Thank you. Oh, let's see. What else? Oh. My niece, Michaela, and her sister, Callie, came and picked up two tables today. Next week at Relay for Life, they are doing a beautiful locks cut-a-thon. And if anyone has eight inches of hair that they want to cut, they will be in the center of the track cutting hair. She said they have 22 people agreeing to it. Ah, oh, yes. And Chris says, remember to surround yourself with funny people, too. Amen. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So. Well, what is this? So now I'm on my third one. Brother. Can you imagine someone who tunes into this Fibercast for doll making and this is all they see? One, two, three. Nutcrackers. And then what's going to be really cool is what's really fun is once you get this stuck, stuff, then we can adorn it with really fun things. Like here's an old rickrack. And I forget what I adorned it with. I don't think that was it. <laughs> This is fun, crinkle red. Anyway, it needs arms. Huh. I think I'll stuff one more, see who else is out there, and call it a night. Let's see. There we go. Happy birthday to everyone who's had a birthday or is having a birthday in May. Maybe we should do that. Once a month we should celebrate birthdays. Ha! Huh. And I'll bake us a cake. How's that? <laughs> That's kind of funny. I find that funny. Can you see me here? 
and then you all write in and say what's your birthday and I'll eat a cake, a piece of cake for every birthday. <laughs> That's silly. Be delicious though. Mom, I Bob is gonna cook us a good meal. I asked him. He said he saw some other some prime rib on sale and I I suggested that we brought down a piece of meat last time that we didn't eat, and maybe we should eat that first. So I think we'll do that. Anywho, what else? I hope you're all having fun things to work on or finishing things up, whatever your pleasure. It should be nice enough to get outside this weekend here in the Northeast anyway. It's been a rainy week. Oh, so I didn't tell you about Baltimore. It rained. It rained in Baltimore Tuesday through Thursday, and the flights in and out were delayed and bumpy going up through that cloud mass. It's fine once we got up above, but boy, it was bumpy. And A.O. and Barb, thanks for sending me the link to the knitting shop in Baltimore. I went and checked it out. In fact, I should tell everyone about it. And it turned out that it was closed on Thursdays. I want to see if if Sandy sent a picture last week that I forgot to share with you. Let me make sure. Oh, here we go. Oh, Ginger Rose. Hi, Ginger Rose. She sent some fibers that are beautiful for making dolls hair with. She says, I missed you last night but caught up this morning. So this was a week ago. Great meeting doll making friends. She says she doesn't see herself delving into it. The long ago learned to never say never. Ha, you're a very smart woman. The dolls at the International Quilt Show in Houston last fall were amazing and inspiring. She says, this is Ginger Rose, she says, in addition to quilting and sewing, my other two main craft hobbies are knitting and spinning. Ooh, in fact, I'm still working on a pair of socks for my long arm quilter friend while I sit down to watch podcasts. So looking at the... Um, so looking at the bald head dolls this morning remind me of a couple of Etsy shops. So she sent me some pictures of spinning fiber. Anywho, that's a great idea to trade. Trade your artwork. It's a good idea. Okay, so. I think that's it. Let's see who else. Make sure I haven't missed anyone. Ooh, from Mary Beth in San Antonio, AKA Flying Pecan, she says, TGIFF, Fibercast. Hi, Lynn and everyone. Working on my UFO circle rag quilt baby blanket. Have a great weekend. And I'm downloading it now. Oh, you too, Mary Beth. Oh, I, we have another Mary. Mary Beth, who is in Prague. Oh, isn't that neat? Oh, my sister will like that. She's in her pastel phase. And I know that's hard to see. Oh. But it looks like you're sewing circles together and then folding them back and forth. That is neat. Love it. Thanks for sharing. Oh, and Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Wendy says, hello, Lynn, and everyone out there. Just thought I would send you a photo of my granddaughter's fox quilt. Crystal and I have made for her birthday on Monday. Crystal beautifully quilted it on my long arm yesterday, and we will bind it today, so I will probably be still doing it tonight here while watching you. She says, dear Jane is hovering behind my machine waiting its turn. Oh, that's wonderful. Hope you're well and not working too hard. I love your dolls and are on my to-do list after the fox, the little fox Amigurumi, which has me intrigued. 
Always grateful for you and Fibercast, Wendy. Oh, thank you, Wendy. And your oh, look at your fox quilt. And this is excellent. I'm going to pull it up on the big screen. One of the foxes is not like the other. All right, I'm going to pull that up. That is cool. I love what you did. Okay, so let's pull that up again. It's downloading. Oh, this is the best. Can you see which fox is not like the others? I don't know if it's coming through. It's on the second level. And it's the one, two, third one in. Can you see it has glasses? That is great. Oh, and I love the unifying gray in the background and then all your colors and your that is just lovely. I like it a lot. Keep on keeping on, Wendy. All right, one more thing. Kathy says hi. She's machine binding. Kathy here in southern Ontario, just wondering of your opinion on machine binding. She asks, have you ever tried it? She's thinking of trying it on a baby quilt, and she says, keep up the great work. Oh, thank you, Kathy. I have done machine binding. I try it every couple of years because I think I'm going to save all sorts of time. And I have never successfully done it such that I am happy with the results. Now, I think with a baby quilt that's going to presumably get washed often, that I would forego the best looking binding seam and go for durability. And certainly machine quilting it would give you good durability. And there are ways to trick the eye into not having it be wonky. For example, Let's say you sew the binding on the front. You create your binding. Okay, let's start over. Let's say you cut a two and a half inch strip width strip of what's going to be your binding. And then you fold it in half and you iron it. So now you have this long strip of folded over binding. Sew it on, place it on your edging, all the rough edges again together on the quilt, and sew a quarter of an inch all the way around. Then turn it over, and rather than trying to line it right up on the seam that you just sewed, because when you turn it over, that's where I always get into trouble. You could either you could try and turn it completely over so that you almost don't see the binding on the front, and then turn it over and then just sew like a sixteenth of an inch inside the edge of that folded area. That might give you some more precision. I, again, great. Um, yes, I've tried it. I've tried it every few years. On something that I'm really liking, I probably wouldn't do it. But on a utilitarian quilt, I would do it in a heartbeat. And in fact, remember, I told you I've been um, been a judge two years now at the at one fair, the, the Martha's Vineyard Ag Fair, and we have disqualified a quilt because it was so poorly machined. But we didn't disqualify it. We, we eliminated it from consideration of a ribbon because they had machine quilts in the binding, and it just it didn't match up. It was wonky. It was just hard to do. So I think that's it. Thanks for writing in from Ontario and from Yorkshire, England. And I think we have our Australian contingent is down there. Hello, happy Saturday. I hope you're enjoying your coffee. Thanks once again for joining me. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Jean and Chris, thanks for joining. KB, you too. I have no idea how many of your names I said or how many times. I hope you're all still awake. And if not, sleep well. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining. See you next Friday night here on Fibercast.